Let me ask you a couple of questions. What if? What if there was a revolution going on right now in the business world, globally, that is so profound, it makes the internet revolution look like a blip on the radar? What if this revolution has such devastating implications from layoffs to being bought by bigger companies that it's got the biggest industry giants in the world shaking in their boots? Last question. What if I told you and could prove that this revolution, just like the quality revolution from the 70s, will not be led by generals. It will be led by foot soldiers who innovate and set an influential example that changes their company. Consider the following story. At about 11 a.m., August 29, 2005, Walmart co-manager Jessica Lewis gets into her car and drives to her store. It's Waveland, Mississippi. Katrina has pounded Waveland that day, and she fears the worst for the store. When she arrives, her worst fears are confirmed. The roof caved in. The store was torn up. Aisles were ransacked. Refrigerators knocked over. Almost in her mind, six inches to a foot of water in the store, she couldn't even make her way past the greeting area. But as bad as that scene was, what was really on her mind was the scene out at Highway 90. On Highway 90, hundreds of people were walking around in their pajamas, their underwear, some barefoot, bloodied, crying, they even have a chance to grab stuff when they left the house to go to the shelters, and now they were lost. Not only lost in terms of what had happened that night, but that feeling you have in a tragedy. And she says later, when she looked out to Highway 90, she saw her kids' teachers her friends, her neighbors, her customers. And so she did the only thing you do in a situation like that. She innovated. She picked up her cell phone. She called her brother-in-law who owned a bulldozer and had him come over immediately and bulldoze a path to the back of the store where the dry goods were safe up high. You know, diapers, foods, meats, crackers, those types of things. With her crowbar, she broke into a locked pharmacy to get to the insulin. She was not reprimanded. She was not fired. She was recognized because she's what I call a saver soldier. She's a person that uses work as a platform to change the world whenever possible. CEO Lee Scott, who I've had some time with, he was moved when he heard this story a few days later, along with dozens of other stories about courageous Walmart employees from New Orleans to here in Houston who did what they could, sometimes with, sometimes without permission. When Lee Scott gave his historic sustainability speech in October, just 60 days later, here's what he said. He said, when we saw Katrina, we saw suffering, we saw tears, we saw losses, we saw a tragedy, but we also saw the potential of what Walmart can be. He wondered out loud, what would it take for us to be that company every day that we were on August 29th? And he announced a bold initiative. The initiative was a sustainability I've initiative like we've never... He also announced that all 60,000 of their suppliers immediately had to shrink packaging by 40% or lose distribution, and he shocked the world. He trimmed back transportation emissions by 25% in the first two years. It was a grand plan, and here's why. Lee saw a storm coming several years earlier. Way back in 2003, he saw the storm coming, not Katrina, the responsibility revolution. Tim Sanders wants to get your audience excited about corporate social responsibility and sustainability. His message to leaders, managers, sales, and staff is, help your company help the world. Why? Companies that nurture people, communities, and planet will have stronger brands, better sales, and healthier bottom lines. And as it goes on, you've got everything from Katrina to the inconvenient truth, reinforcing over and over again the urgency of the emergency, and people have changed. Have you noticed this? Have you noticed that people over the last few years have become amazingly involved in everything from community to how people are treated at work to the environment? Here's the research. Now, when I was running the think tank with Stanford at Yahoo, we saw this back in 2002. Now, brand marketing is the first place you always see a revolution coming. Now, in the old days, like for the last two decades, a brand's most important attribute was that it was different. Differentiation, number one, right? 
Number two was it was relevant, meaning it solved a problem that people cared about. Number three on the list was awareness. People know who you are. And finally, number four in the gutter was your social reputation. Made very little difference. We've been studying the power of a company's social reputation on its brand. And did you know the power of reputation has grown more since 2002 than computing power on a percentage basis? It is going to be the future of your brand. Are you a partner? Are you a parasite? Are you a parasite?